So welcome to this uh, ISNCT interview. Professor Yuan Hao Liu is uh, with us today. And uh, we would like to start by asking him, uh, how did you start working in BNCT? Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. It is a great honor to join this CTF interview. It's quite interesting. And I think I, I, my answer will be you know, fun and useful to everyone. So to your first question, I start uh, doing something that is related to BNCT, I think. When you send me the question, I really think it quite hard back to the old day. And I believe my first thing to do with BNCG was back to, I think my third year, before my third year, is the summertime uh, when I was an undergraduate, undergraduate student. So I think it's 2001 when I had to build uh, a scanner using ionization chamber to scan the dose profile for our new uh, BNCT beam. Yeah, I think that's the first thing I do that is related to BNCT. Yeah. Long time ago, more than 20 years. So um, a second question is still related to China. And um, what is the current status of BNCT uh, in your country there? Uh, I would say in recent years, the progress of BNCT in China is doing quite well. It's uh, like a spring here. Uh, probably back to um, 2017, we only have a miniature reactor that is built in a uh, skirt area of Beijing with a 30 kilowatt uh, power. And they did some in a normal cases. I, I believe it's four or five cases with a quite nice outcome, but it's difficult to promote BNCD by using a nuclear reactor. So in principle, it provides the fundamental studies, but it's a pioneer in uh, BNC, uh, Chinese BNCD development. However, uh, since uh, 2019 and today, we have two accelerator based BNCD facility running uh, in China. One is an experimental device that was built in Dongguan by uh, the Institute of High Energy Physics of CAS. And the other one is the one you know behind me is a virtual background, but you can see the building is uh, the BNCT Center in Xiamen City. Uh, it's beautiful, the Xiamen Humanity Hospital, and it's currently uh, under commission. And but we already did hundreds of animals uh, by this facility, and this will become available for human study, I believe. Uh, later this year. And besides these two facilities, there are more coming. It's quite promising here in China. There's another one in Fujian province, uh, maybe probably 100 kilometers away from uh, the Xiamen city. It's still in the same province. There is another hospital called Machu Hospital. They are also uh, building another center for accelerator based BNCT. And there is another one still in Dongguan city by the uh, Institute of High Energy Physics, they have started build a new building to host the new, uh, new accelerator uh, in uh, Dongguan People Hospital. So if everything goes well, I think maybe later next year, we will have four facility running and there will be more coming in Shanghai, Guangzhou and Nanjing as well. So I, my expectation will be probably 10 or more facilities will be built in the next uh, five or six years in China. So we are really into a fact track land here. But this is about uh, uh, the hardware. How about the drugs? I just realized, I, I, my colleagues make a list about uh, the current, you know, the foreign drug development in China. We have more than a thousand new compound is developing currently in, in Chinese uh, research society. And we just uh, been notified our national key project has been approved by the Ministry of uh, uh, Science and Technology. And we, we are developing uh, new generation gadolinium based density drugs. So we can use the MI image to uh, determine what will be the uptake for the gadolinium drugs. 
So to replace uh, one, uh, we are using now uh, by PET because uh, gadolinium is a enhancer uh, in MRI scan. And with MRI scan, we don't, the patient doesn't need to receive any radiation. Since you have been in charge of the development of the Shaman facility, uh, could you tell us um, how much work is needed uh, to create such a facility? This is a, actually a very tough question for me because uh, we need some hard work for sure, but also we need some luck, you know, because uh, uh, not everyone is familiar with BNCT. When you are talking about BNCT uh, physician, clinician, sometimes they look at you with a very, you know, set eyes. Oh, poor you, you are doing BNCT. That comes from 70s or 50s. So sometimes you, you, you encounter this kind of uh, misunderstanding from the uh, medical society. So the first thing is to convince people to believe in BNCT and understand what is BNCT from the old history. They are still stay in the age of reactor beds, uh, uh, reactor beds, neutron souls, and uh, they have the memory from uh, Brookhaven uh, National Laboratory. That the outcome is not so good, but they don't know the recent development. So the first thing is to educate your listener, your audience and the medical society to convince them. So we spend a lot of time doing this. Then after that, uh, we need to uh, design a facility to comply with uh, radiation protection and environmental protection rules uh, applied in China. That was spent a lot of time because it's neutron. And uh, once again, when you talk about neutron to the authorities, they have big question mark on their head. Big bubble, ping. what is neutron? Because for normal people that knows about, when you're talking about radiotherapy, they know about photons, electrons, they're easy to understand. And currently they know more about protons and heavy ions because of particle therapy. But now you bring neutrons to their door, they are terrified sometimes, not always. So you, see, you need to spend time with them to educate again what is BNCT, what is neutron and uh, how we can um, estimate the neutron dose and the secondary dose reduced by neutrons. It's a much complicated uh, question for them. And so this is the second phase we will have to deal with. Then into the construction, when we build the facility, we need a special uh, expert because we use a uh, heavy concrete to build the facility and normally you will only use heavy concrete in a nuclear reactor, nuclear power plant. So it's also very difficult to find a, a supplier who is willing to build such a small scale project. It's big for the for BNCT, but for nuclear power plant, it's small. So this is another question in uh, construction of facility. So this is the beginning then into the installation uh, as you know, install a dedicated accelerator in a, in a hospital. It's not easy. It's not like in a, install something in the national laboratory. In the laboratory, you've got everything you need. The environment is clean, it's mint, and the, the air is being filtered uh, with the humidity control. But in the hospital, they, they don't care and they don't need it. They care about how to keep bacteria or virus away not keep us the humidity away, something like that. So we have to work together with hospital and it spend us a lot of effort to build the, the install the whole facility, the whole hardware and accelerator then into the commissioning uh, stage, et cetera, et cetera. But I believe that part is uh, more un easy to understand for you. And uh, after that is uh, we need to do a uh, VMV verification and validation for the beam. So it means a lot of measurement needs to be done, but not only by uh, physics, but we also need to do it with uh, animal. We need to test for the safety. And beyond that, we need uh, to build our own uh, concentration measurement uh, technology here. So we need to build another set of ICP mass and uh, also we are 
uh, now try to build a uh, uh, auto-ready upgrade uh, equipment in the center. So to bring a facility into reality is the sum up of many different factors. And once I count the number of, you know, uh, number of people who participate in this project in different phases, it involves hundreds of experts, technicians, workers, administration people, hundreds of them. So it's really a systematical, uh, systematical work. You started building the facility in this was a well, strange period where uh, anyway the, the there is a recession there is like there's tons of difficulties but what is now the status of your facility uh, we have the first thing uh, in august last year and after that we keep doing a lot of animal experience as well as the you know, measurement for the bee uh, but after new year we hit some rocks and we are now repaying the accelerator and hope it will come back online in short time. So we expect to reach uh, full power sometime later this year. And in the same time, we will apply for uh, investigator initiated trial in uh, Shaman Humanity Hospital. If everything goes well, we can start our first human study probably in October or November. And we expect, we expect to do uh, the first page, maybe 10 patients in the, by the end of this year. Then after we accumulate 10 patients data and build the confidence and also fix something, modify our protocol and have our medical staff uh, some training and accumulate experience, we will apply for official clinical, clinical trial, phase two trial spring next year. and. Uh, I hope it will start summertime 2023. So in principle, this is our uh, current status and uh, the future. Yeah. And I would, uh, I would like to ask you, how important it is uh, to have uh, good collaborators and uh, international uh, partnerships to improve the world of BNCT and also to be able to create a facility such as the one you were talking about? Uh, let's answer the first part of your question, uh, the international cooperation, I think is essential for BNCT because uh, like what I explained in my last, last question, to bring BNCT into reality, that encounters many different subjects and different disciplines to work together. And it's very difficult for anyone to understand everything and be good at everything. So you, you need multidisciplinary cooperation. And we know it's very difficult for one group to have everything. So you, you need to cooperate with each other. So international cooperation will definitely facilitate the development of BSC. For example, your group, uh, the group of Papia is doing the spec uh, for bottom measurement, real-time bottom measurement. That will be very interesting for my group because we are not doing that. But my group is still doing um, new facility design and new bean shaping assembly that we can share with other facilities. And for example, the group in uh, in Russia, Novo Cyberis, they have a technology for very good uh, target design to generate new charts. And if we put everything together, it will make us all of us much easier to build a new facility because everyone can bring in uh, their experience in their field and also bring in the state of the art that can minimize our risk and uh, help us to to you know skip and to dodge the, the bullets from the uncertainties so international cooperation one thing we can share experience Second thing, we can borrow each other's strengths to enhance our study. And the other very important uh, point uh, to emphasize the international cooperation is currently, except for the one for a uh, Sumitomo machine, actually every facility has different neutron spectra. And 
we need international cooperation to answer better how the radiobiology, how a biology damage were caused by different neutron beams and different mixtures because you have different components from photon and neutron and they have different energies, et cetera. And this will help us to answer more to have a better insight into this radiation biology part. And it is impossible to do to do this in one single facility. So we need international cooperation to have better dosimetry in exchange, to have better understanding in radiation biology, et cetera. And furthermore, international cooperation will help us to accumulate clinical cases. For example, it's very difficult for, for one group to have more than 100 patients at this stage. But for authorities, they want to know uh, cases that is more than thousands. And it would be very difficult for one single group to do it. So with the cooperation support from overseas facilities, we can enlarge the pool, patient pool. And also we, we can provide support to foreign patients as well. So we can solve together international, co international cooperation. We have only pros with, with no negative impact. So uh, what is the message that we should uh, convey to, to, the, to the public about BNCP? Uh, what I can, sh can answer to this question is our, our actions in China maybe could be an example to, uh, to answer this question. We try to explain to our audience by a more uh, straightforward, easy understanding language and to answer people, their concerns and what they would like to know. For example, normally people would like to know, uh, yes, what is BNCT? And then next question will be, uh, what would be the indication for BNCT? Am I suitable or my family, my, my father, my mother are suitable for BNCT? Because normally they have this question. They, they, they got interest in BNCT because their family or themselves are cancer patients. So then we answer this kind of question to give them instructions and help uh, them to understand BNCT in a way a patient would like to know how the workflow, how they will experience, experience BNCT during the treatment, that's something they care. So we, we build a, a WeChat group to provide this kind of information. And we, we will share the latest research uh, from different journals. We give a, like, we have an extract available online for the researchers, but also we publish uh, some articles to answer patients' questions. So that's what we are doing now in China. So with the ad, with the help of CTF, I believe the newsletter you are doing now, monthly newsletter is really very useful, but it's currently available only for our society. So how could we send the message and that the external audience has a chance to reach out the city of New State and all the videos you have made for the society. I think the materials are there, but we need the channels to guide this information to people who, who need it. They are the, the first uh, audience because they are eager to, to learn about BNCT. The inner circle is the society. The second circle is the patient who and the patient family who would like to know BNCT. Then if we expand our circle to the third level will be the medical, general medical groups. So in my opinion, how the society of ISNCT can help promote BNC to public for the third circle, third groups of people, probably we can have as a one society to join like uh, ASCO, ASCO, AAPN, this kind of uh, general uh, oncology congress to hold a workshop 
to give a lecture. And nowadays, there are a lot of workshops that hold virtual. And this uh, virtual workshop can be recorded and replayed for their members. And their members are much, the number of their members are much, much larger than our society. So if we can do that, I believe we can send a, a very uh, useful information to these group, groups of people. And then they can pass this information to their patients because they are in contact with patients every day. We, we also provide clinical information for a uh, patient who would like to receive BNCT. We will provide uh, uh, on our web page. We will tell them all the uh, criteria to be, you know, uh, to be eligible for BNCT treatment in, for example, in uh, uh, Southern Tohoku General Hospital and how you can apply for BNCT in Taiwan, how you do it and how it will be a uh, a rough course for that and what kind of document you need to prepare. And normally what you will need to do when it's the first time you contact uh, the doctor in uh, the BSD facility, what you, what you can do to facilitate this kind of discussion. So I believe maybe, maybe because what we provide is in, in Chinese, uh, I believe you, the CTF maybe can build an English page or multi-language page for international patients because they they always google it they always google this kind of information 